should work. Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Paige and I am the owner of Smudge Art Studio. I am super excited to be here with you in my kitchen for a Saturday afternoon painting workshop. How different life is, eh? And it sounds like it's going to be different for quite a bit longer. Um, we won't get to see your lovely faces in person, but these virtual workshops um, allow you the opportunity to create the smudge in the comfort of your own home. So thank you so much for being here with me on a Saturday afternoon. And I also want to thank you for taking the time to grab your own supplies. Um, I found last week it was, we had a lot of artists though, so, um, but it was just a, a, a lot of work to get all of the materials in order and I yeah, there was a lot of paint. So this week, um, we don't need a lot of colors. And plus, if you are going to continue to do this on a regular basis, it would be nice to have your own supplies available, right? So um, that way you don't have to rely on me. You just need canvas, colors, brushes, a paper plate palette, whatever you want to use for your palette, and a jar of water. So um, you will want to have those available. So this is my palette. This is not how much black I have. I poured too much, so I had to scoop some in. And I probably won't even need this much paint. This is actually a lot of paint, so I might even be doing another one this afternoon. Um, you will also want to have your brushes. Sorry, I'm just gonna grab mine here. So I have these two sizes. They're a half inch and a one inch brush. And then I've actually grabbed a really tiny, tiny brush just for the antennae. Antennae, yeah, um, you don't need this. You'd be fine without, and you can also use the hard end of a brush to create a really thin line as well. So I'll show you that when we get there. The other thing you will want is a jar of water to wash your brushes in, and you will want a bunch of paper towel. The paper towel is going to be your best friend throughout this process because you do not want acrylic paint to go down your drain. So I'm going to say that again. You do not want acrylic paint to go down your drain. It is plastic. It dries like a plastic. So if it goes down your drain and if you continue to do this on a continual basis, it will actually block your drain. So don't do that. Any acrylic paint you want to scrape it off if you have it at the end or put it in the garbage if it's in, on a paper plate, that's great. But in between washing, because you want to get as much paint out of your brush before you wash it, you're actually going to take your paper towel. Sorry. You're going to take your paper towel and you're just going to wipe your brush out really well on your paper towel first. Then you're going to stick your brush in the jar and you're going to get movement in those bristles. So you're going to rub, 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 rub shake it off again. So we try and, and keep the water in here, but basically the whole idea is that you don't want to have painted water and you don't want to have watery paint. So you are going to wipe, rinse, and wipe anytime you are changing colors. But you only need to do that when you are changing colors. Anytime in between, you actually don't even need to rinse your brush. So for those of you who have painted with us before, or painted before, you always know that we start with the background and we work our way forward. So just to give you a little bit of process of the steps in this, we are going to start with anything around the leaf. So that would be our background color. And you never have to follow the colors that I am doing, okay? So if you want a pink background, rock on. If you want a purple leaf, fantastic. If you want orange ladybugs, great. This is your masterpiece, you decide, okay? Um, however, I'm gonna be, a little normal and go with what we had before. So I'm going to do blue, green, and then red ladybugs with black spots. So um, this afternoon will be um, pretty easy. We actually don't need a lot of colors. So artists, when you're ready, if you want to wet your brush, just to get the bristles together and then blot out the water again. So wet your big, so we're gonna start with our big brush, I'm sorry. You could also do a medium brush if you wanted to, but we're painting kind of larger areas here. So Start with your bigger brush, whichever your biggest brush is, as long as it will fit in here. And um, you'll want to wet it just to get the bristles together. And I'm going to start with my background. So my background is going to be a light blue. So I'm actually just going to take some of this blue and some of this white and kind of mix them together in the middle here so that I can get a lighter blue. 
and I don't even have to really mix it because um, I should tell you the harder that you press with your bristles, the more the paint builds inside of your bristles and you don't want that. You want the paint to always stay on the tips of your bristles. If you happen to have palette knives, that's another great way to mix paint, but not necessary. If you're gentle with your brush, you can totally use your brush. So, and you can see I didn't mix very well, right? It's still all mixy together. I have white and blue and it's not one unison blue, but that's okay. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm just gonna do a little bit of an outline and it doesn't have to be perfect at all. I just like to do that to give myself a buffer, buffer, because I'm a little messy. And then we're just going to fill in. It doesn't matter if you start at the top right or the bottom left. And it doesn't have to be really pretty either. It can just be kind of messy. You just want to fill in the space. If you like kind of white streaks in there, then add your white streaks. And you may also want to take the paint around the side to paint the side of your canvas as well. If you are going to hang this up or you're going to give it as a gift to someone to hang up, I would recommend painting the sides. If you have this on an easel though, do not paint anything that is going to touch your easel because it will dry to your easel and then it's really, really hard to get off. So I just kind of painted the bottom left corner blue. I'm going to go with the top right corner. And I'm just going to do a really quick outline. The way I did that is I took my big brush and just turned it on its side so I could get a thin line. So again, artists, don't fret too much if you went over top of the lines, if it's not perfect. Um, we always paint in an order that we can go back and fix or that we're going to paint over top of. So again, throughout this process, if you have any questions at all, please unmute your mic and ask me. If you type something, I'm usually too busy looking at the canvas that I won't see it pop up. So please, if you have any questions at all or you're not sure how to mix a color, please just unmute your mic and ask. All right, artists, so we're just filling in our top right corner background here. And no, it doesn't have to be perfect. You will want to bring that color around the sides. And my easel isn't touching up here, so I can paint up here, up on the top part, and down the side. Sorry. Just need to get on the other side there. Actually, just gonna do this. So you'll just wanna paint down the side as well. And we just do that if you're going to hang it, if you're not going to put it into a frame, um, just to finish it off a bit. And again, artists, it doesn't have to be really perfect. Like mine's all smudgy and smooshy. Okay. So once you have painted the top right corner and the bottom left corner, you are going to wipe, rinse, and wipe your brush because we are going to move on to the leaf. So you're going to take paper towel, just kind of smush out as much of that paint as you can. Take your brush in the jar and rub those bristles. So when you are done the top left, oh, let's try that again, the top right and the bottom left, just rinse out your brush. And then maybe give me a thumbs up when you're ready to go, just so I know. I think there's little icons somewhere. Like, oh look, I can send a heart, cool. There we go. <laughs> Awesome, thanks Rachel. Nice, thanks Jen. All right, artists, our next step, don't worry if you're not there, I know you're almost done. But our next step is going to be to paint in the base layer of our leaf. So this is going to be um, kind of the main color of our leaf. So I have green and yellow here because I want to brighten up this green a little bit. So I'm actually going to take some yellow and mix it in with my green to brighten it up. If you don't have green, you are going to use yellow and blue. You're going to mix them together to create a green. The more blue that you have, the darker your green will be and the more turquoise it will be. The more yellow you have, the, the brighter it will be. 
anytime you add white to your paint, it will pale your color. So um, you could do that when you're adding highlights or if you wanted a mint green leaf, that's entirely up to you. When you mix blue and yellow together, though you can create a really nice leafy, spring leafy green, um, but I am just going to use the green that I have with a little bit of yellow. All right, my cat is roaming around, so I apologize. She is, well, she's decided she's gonna hang out on the back of my chair. All right. So artists, I'm again, just kind of mixing in between my two colors here, creating a green that I am happy with. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we can blend right on our canvas. So um, you don't want a lot of paint on your brush. Um, it looks like I have a lot, but I've tried to get as much of the gobs out as possible because I'm going to outline again. So you're going to take your big brush or a medium brush, but you're going to take your big brush and turn it on its side to create a thin line. So when you are ready, you're going to take your big brush, put whatever shade of green, hue of green you want on it, and we are going to outline. No, do not jump on my shoulder, Zoe. Sorry. <laughs> she's really pretty. I should show you her. And she's being really stubborn right now. Looks like she's not going to leave me alone today. Oh, seriously, Kat. You want to say hello to everybody? Come say hello. This is Zoe. She's so sweet. Oops. I think she thinks I'm on her chair or something, which I'm not. All right, sorry, artist Zoe distracted me there. So we're just gonna turn our brush on its side and we're going to outline a little bit. So we're going to outline our bugs. And you can use your medium brush for this and it doesn't have to be perfect. And we're going to outline our leaf a little bit. And you can see my green is totally different than the green that I originally used. So, <laughs> what a bad kid cat. She just wants snuggle time, I think. Usually right now she's sleeping. All my cats are usually sleeping at this time, but this one today, I think she had a party last night or something. All right, so I've just outlined a little bit. Don't worry, I know that doesn't look pretty. We're gonna cover a lot of that up. So we're gonna take our big brush. And um, so a leaf grows from the middle out. So what you kind of want to do is there was this line here, right, in the um, outline. So there was that middle line. What you kind of want to do is take your brush strokes because you will see them. So using your big brush, you're gonna load your brush with green paint. And we want to take our brush strokes out towards the edge of the leaf. So artists, if you land your brush and it takes off paint like that, you actually want to have more paint on your brush. So that's kind of the trick here is we just want to load up. You may have to press it very lightly and it's okay if you need to make more green, it's okay if it's not the perfect shape or hue or tint or whatever you do. Um, because leaves, when you look at them, are not the same all throughout either, right? They've got different colors in them. You can be smudgy and smooshy with your colors, okay? So don't fret too much. And artists will probably even have time to come back and do a second coat on this. I think we will. So we're just going to fill this in. Don't worry about it being pretty. I think we'll come back and do a second coat on that. Okay, but so do spread out your paint because we do want to come back and do a second coat. Make sure your paint is spread out so you don't have any gloops or globs because those gloops and globs will not dry quickly and will make it very difficult for you to paint over top. And the other thing you'll probably want to do is take this green around the sides of your canvas. 
and the top if you can. All right. So again, you're going to do the exact same thing on the right side. So you're going to take your brush from that middle line and you are going to create your green and just fill in your leaf space. How's everyone doing? Any questions so far? All right, please do ask me if you do have any questions. Um, if you're not sure how to get that green that you're looking for, and don't worry, it doesn't have to be pretty. We, I've decided we're going to come back and do a second coat. So artists, just try and make this as um, lump or clump free as possible. And just spread out your page. I mean, I guess it depends on the quality of your paint too, right? So um, if you have a thicker body paint, you are probably okay to not do a second coat. But it's kind of like when you paint a wall, right? It always looks better with that second coat on it for sure. All right, artists, once I've got that whole green area done, I'm going to wipe, rinse, and wipe my brush. So no rush. We've got time. That was a big space to paint, okay? So please don't feel like you need to be exactly where I'm at. So we did interrupt a little bit, so. So wipe out your brush using your paper towel, stick your brush in the jar, wrap those bristles on the bottom, and squeeze out the paint. I guess the other area that you don't want to have lumps and clumps in is definitely around your ladybug, because we're gonna do two coats on our ladybug as well. So the first coat, um, you just don't, of course, you never want green and red to mix together. It creates kind of a muddy color. Actually, it creates a mud color. Uh, so just make sure there's no lumps and clumps around your ladybugs. So our next step will be to add the first coat on our ladybugs. So maybe when you are ready for that, sorry, there's a clump there. When you're ready for that, just give me a thumbs up or a heart or whatever you can send so I know where you are at. And please do ask me if you have any questions at all. That's why I'm here. Thank you. So artists, our next step is going to be our red. You do not have to have a red ladybug. You can have a fuchsia ladybug. You could have a lime green ladybug. You can have a rainbow ladybug if you really want to be that um, energetic about it, because rainbow does take a lot of time. Um, but it's your ladybug, you decide. I am going to use red. But a nice thing to do um, if you happen to have some pink is to mix some, like a, a fuchsia or a magenta or anything like that in with your red. It just creates a different tone. It's really pretty. I was just wondering if I wanted, my, my red's kind of an orangey red. Do I just mix some black in with it because I'd like a dark red? No. So don't mix, uh, red, don't mix black with any of your colors unless you kind of want um, a gray is kind of what it turns out to be. So can you tell me what colors you have in your palette, like, or that you have available to you? I, I have tons available. Do you? <laughs> um, do you have, um, you have an orangey red? Yeah. Can you do me a favor and try a little bit of purple in there? Sure. Just a little bit. Okay. Thank you. I just, I was contemplating black and I thought I'd ask first. No, thank you for asking because that's what a lot of people think is that if you add black, oh, I know, do you have an umber? Um, I'm not sure what color umber is. Sure. So it will be like a gray brown sort of color. Okay. And your colors, if you're, if you're using tubes, it should be on your tubes. No, I just have a gold that's closer. Ooh. That's cool too. Um, try some a little bit of violet or purple first, 
that should deepen your red a little bit, but I am just a little worried about the orange in there too, because orange and purple will kind of make a, a funky color. Um, but just try a little bit and, and see if you like it. All right, artists, when you are ready, our next step is going to be to fill in the first layer of our ladybug. So I'm going to use my big brush for this. You could also use your medium brush. So I am going to use my one inch brush because we have a larger area. I want this to fill in really well. So again, I'm going to outline first and then fill in. So this, you kind of want to be a little bit more careful because it's like you're cutting in a wall. You want to have nice straight lines. So if you have shaky hands, you might just want to balance your pinky finger somewhere dry on your canvas. And just slowly cut in your ladybug's body. So use the edge of the brush as your friend. You drag out any lumps and clumps that you may have, but go very slowly. All right, once you've done your buffer, now you can fill in. We are going to go back and do a second coat on our ladybug. There. So, first coat done. Again, try and, and watch. I have a big lump over, a big clump over here, a lump of red. I'm not too worried about it because my focus for my green is going to be on the front. And actually, Artis, I don't know about you, but my green is actually almost dry already, except down here. I piled on the paint down here. Anyway. So, Artis, we're just going to turn. So I just turn the brush, use the edge as my friend, circle first, and then fill in. We are not going to do the black right now, so the black head and the antennae and the spots, that will be later. So artists, take your time, because our next step is going to be to do second coats, and we want this to dry. <laughs> so when you're done that, you may want to sit back and relax for a little bit. Because my green, and I piled on the paint down there. Up here, it's actually a little bit dry. So we're going to get that a little bit of time to dry. Painting is all about the layers, really. You can always paint from the back to the front. So once you've filled in your ladybug, wipe, rinse, and wipe your brush, because we're going to go back and do a second coat on our leaf if you feel it's necessary, a minus. Artists, how's everyone doing? Any questions? So next Saturday, we have our birdcage masterpiece. Um, that one you can choose an outline canvas if you want. That one's not very difficult to outline either. Um, you could probably even just do it by looking at it. It's just a branch and honestly a couple of birds. Birds are just really circles with extras on them. That's all a bird is. An artist, I hope you have some nice music going on at your house. Fine, he's quiet. I just didn't want any distractions for you from the painting. So I hope you have some nice music going on. So artists, you can paint over top of wet paint. You just have to be really, really gentle. And you have to have more wet paint on your brush than there is on your canvas. So. Um, I really piled on the paint down here, but up here, and you can see if you look at it on its side, it'll be less glossy than, of course, when it was wet. 
So how about I'll wait another minute or so, let it dry. If you want, artists, you could even lift off your canvas and you could wave it. If you really wanted to, you could blow on it. Maybe I'll do a little bit of waving. Maybe that will help. Except I just realized I had painty fingers. Oh well. So I should let you know if you haven't, if you didn't know this already, but acrylic paint does stain cloth and clothes. However, it can come off of hard surfaces if you get it quickly enough. So if this does happen to get on your counter or your table or somewhere else that you don't want it, like down my stairs, I have no idea how I got acrylic paint down there, but I did. Yeah, that's why I should not paint in my house. <laughs> you will want to just grab some Fantastic or a house cleaner and with a gentle scrubby, because you don't want to scratch any finish on your house items, uh, just gently scrub it off. I think I got some on the floor too. I'm amazed my husband lets me paint in my home. I'm not allowed to paint walls because I'm <laughs> very messy. Everyone thinks you need to be exact or precise to be a painter, and you really don't. You just need to be willing to accept that it's all about the layers. All right. Maybe that will have to do. So artists, when you're ready, you're going to grab your green paint. You're going to mix whatever color. Maybe it's even different from your first one, right? Maybe it's lighter. You're going to mix your green and we're going to do our second coat. So if your green is wet, you're going to want to go very lightly over top. And if you land your brush and it feels sticky, stop. Because that means you're actually lifting paint off. Um, your brush should always glide very gently across your canvas and just be very careful when you go around your ladybugs. Oh, I might actually need more paint. Yeah. And don't worry, we're going to add um, other lines to our ladybugs. Or I mean to our leaves and our ladybugs. This is all just about filling it in. And if you go over top of your ladybug's head, don't worry. We're painting a black, at least I am. So black can go over top of pretty much anything. That's actually why you also don't want to mix black with your colors because it will actually eat up your colors. If you do have your own palette of various colors, um, actually umber is a really nice brown to mix with. Um, your reds, your yellows even, to get kind of a darker, ooh, there's my red smudge. See? That's okay though. I'm just paint right over top. To get just a, tar a darker hue of it. And artists, I have to grab more paint. <laughs> I'll be right back. Did not expect that. The funny thing is, Zoe is keeping my chair warm. Right, Zoe? You should take it down. Here, let's get you down. There you go. All right. I didn't think I'd use all that. It is a pretty big space, though, isn't it? So again, artists, when you're painting over top of wet paint, just make sure that you have more wet paint on your brush than you do on your canvas. And so just be careful going around your ladybug. Go slow and watch your lines. See how I've got a big yellow streak there? That's okay. 
maybe that part of the leaf isn't uh, isn't green yet. Try and get as close to your ladybug as you can without smudging your red. There we go. And again, if you land your brush and it takes off your paint, you need more paint on your brush and you need to paint very gently. How's everyone doing with that, okay? So we're gonna come back and we're gonna do some dark spots um, after. All right, so you just wanna give your leaf a second coat. That green turned out pretty dark. So after you're done that, we're gonna wipe, rinse, and wipe our brush. And we're going to go and add a second coat to our ladybugs. But this will be the final coat to our ladybugs. So it will need to be whichever green you want it to be. Ha! <laughs> Red or yellow or pink or orange or purple, whatever color you want your ladybug. Could be green, fine green. I'm making a mess. All right. Sorry, I just had to switch my brush out. That one was kind of giving me a little bit of grief. All right. So artists, when you're done with your second coat of green, you're gonna go back to the second coat on your ladybug. So again, if your paint is wet, it will come off so you just need to have more wet paint on your brush than there is on your canvas and artists if it's not dry yet if you're not comfortable painting over top of it if you're like hey i don't even need a second coat then great just leave it and artists i'm just going to pause there for a little bit so don't worry if you're not there like if you're still, still filling in your leaf or wherever you're at i'm just going to pause for a little bit give a little bit of time for our ladybugs to dry so after i've added my second and final coat i am going to wipe rinse and wipe my brush and actually artists if you want you could be done with your big brush if you want to be hey that looks great If you want to be done with your big brush, you could be. Um, I think I'm actually going to use my medium brush for the rest of it. Who knows? I changed my mind. Used on my paper towel already. A lot of wiping, rinsing, and wiping, eh? In between colors. So, artists, if you are looking for art supplies, Michaels is offering curbside pickup as well as home delivery. Desserts is also offering delivery, and Curry's is also offering delivery. So, it's C-U-R-R-Y-S.com for curries. Desserts is D-E-S-E-R-R-E-S -E -E dot com, I think, or C-A, I can't remember. Um, and then Michael's Canada. So if you are going to get your own supplies, you can purchase through them. I think they might be taking a couple days to fill curbside pickup orders, though. Um... But it's nice to have, and I did notice this morning that Liquitex Basics are on sale, which is nice. Um, they're just basic um, grade paint, 
but they're good enough for what you'll be doing if you do ever get into professional status or where you're going to sell your paints you want better quality paints but to start they're great so How's everyone doing? Where are you all at? Sorry, just making sure I haven't missed anything. I know it's like we're waiting for paint to dry or something. I know, I'm hilarious as I sit here. It's so weird because usually I can interact with you and I can see where you're at or, you know, if I should slow down or speed up or whatever and just to be on this end of things in this life it's really different now cannot wait until we can get back to painting with you in person but for now this will do and maybe there's more airflow up here that's why it's really not drying down there all right. So artists, when you're ready, let's actually, um, I'm gonna skip a step because I have the, the next step is to um, do the dark parts of the leaf, but I am sorry, my leaf is still really wet. Yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna hold off because I think we can actually go on to the ladybug's head. So when you're ready, you could use your medium brush or if you want to do a smaller brush, you could. But my medium brush is my half inch brush. So it's still, I mean, it's still a pretty good size, but it's enough to fill in. And I'm going to dip a little bit into my black. Now, this is where I have to warn you. You cannot erase or get rid of black, ever. Like, if you put a black dot right there, it's going to stay. No matter how many layers you do, you will always see it. That's just how the way black is. So, um, when you're ready, you're going to very carefully take your brush and outline the head first or in line, I guess I should say. Now this is kind of nice because you can go over top of your lines a little bit and kind of fill in any space that you may have missed. So again, let the edge of the brush do the work for you and then fill it in. So artists, we don't really want to come back and do a second coat on our ladybug's head or any of the black spots really. So just get as much paint in there as you can and let it be solid. Okay. The same with the little ladybug. And outline first and then fill in. Okay. So I painted my heads and I'm not going to do my dots yet or my line that goes down the half um, just because I want my red to dry a little bit more before I touch it.
How's everyone doing? Am I going at a good pace? Too fast, too slow? Should have brought my hair dryer. I guess I could go get it. All right. So our next step is going to be to add some darker parts to our leaf. You could, if you want to, you could outline if you wanted to. But I think what I'm going to do, so I'm going to make a darker green. So this time I'm just going to take yellow and blue and mix it together. Now, the more blue I have, the darker my green will be. If you have your own paints, a phthalo blue is, or phthalo green, pardon me, is really nice. It's, it's darker. Maybe I lied. This is turning more turquoise. I'm not sure I love that too much. There we go. So artists, you can use your medium brush for this step. You just want to make sure that you get all of the paint out of the bristles so that it's not like a balloon. If you have too much paint in your bristles, it will expand huge and um, yeah, it'll literally be like painting with a balloon. It's really annoying. So just make sure it is scraped out as well as possible. Sorry, artists, I'm still not happy with that green really matter though, <laughs> I guess, right? It'll turn out how it's going to turn out. I'm just going to mix some of that oxide green that I had. All right. So using your medium brush, the first thing that you want to do is figure out where your center line down your leaf is. So I'm figuring that my center line is here. Sorry, artist, my paint is still quite wet down there. I piled that paint on. I'm going to figure it's here-ish. And here-ish. Okay, so that's just to give us a little bit of a stem, I guess you could say. Now, you could use your medium brush for this, your big brush, whatever you want. You could use your medium brush on its side. Just think of the line that you want to portray from your stem. So it doesn't even have to be really pretty, it can just be really quick. It's just to get some um, differentiation in your, in that great big green area that you've got going on. And we're gonna take swipes from the center towards the outside edge. You can see I'm not going all the way. So the other thing I was going to say is if you really wanted to, you could take this green and you could outline. You do not have to do this, though, so please don't feel like what I'm doing you have to do. But let's say you just took this darker green and you did a bit of an outline. Maybe maybe that's what you like. Oops. Taking off paint. There we go. Yeah, I kind of like that, actually. So artists, you can decide if you want to do this outline. You don't have to. I actually kind of like that. I'm done. You are? Oh my goodness. Can can you wait until the end and you can show me? Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. I just, I'm recording it. So, and then it goes on YouTube and then everybody would see it. And wow. Pretty good thing. All right, artists, we are just adding some lines in. They don't even have to be perfect. They're just to create a little bit of differentiation in your leaf. Really wet down here. All right. Oh, so you can't paint. All right, artists, I am 
done with that and happy with it. So when you're happy with it, stop, wipe, rinse, and wipe your brush. And put all that lovely paper towel I had. And we are gonna go on to the black spots. So you wanna make sure that your ladybug is dry for this next step, or that you have lots of black paint on your brush. So artists, when you're ready, you're gonna choose whichever ladybug is most dry. For this next step, actually, you can use your small brush if you want to, or you can use your medium brush on its side. Um, just make sure you get a thin line. So if I'm using a, whoops, let's go here. If I'm using a small brush, I like to kind of roll it in my paint so it gets all over the tip, the little tiny tip. And sorry, I have to do this from straight on. But you want to kind of split your ladybug right down the middle, ish. And it's okay if it's not perfect. All right. Sorry, I just can't remember if this had um, I know the original one from like a really long time ago had like a black tail. This one does not. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to split it down the middle. Um, and if you want to do this next step, you can, but you do not have to. Is you could take that same thin brush, make sure it's in a really nice point. And you could, if you want to, again, you don't have to. And slowly outline. Now, what I should say is you can do this later with a Sharpie. You might even like that better. But if you want to do it with your paint, you're going to hold your breath because it works better that way. And you're just going to very slowly follow around your ladybug. So the sample of this that you guys saw, did have this done. But you do not have to do this. This could be something that you added later with just a black Sharpie. Sometimes it's nice to not have to think about anything else except drawing that line, right? All right, so you've gotten quite comfortable in the chair. All right, artists, so <laughs> we are going to take either a small brush or a medium brush. I guess it depends on what size of dots you want. I would start with bigger ones first, and then you could always fill in smaller dots. Now, your circles, your dots, they don't have to be perfect. They have to be round-ish. Actually, they don't. Be whatever you want them to be. Wherever you want them to be, they don't have to be symmetrical. Oh, my cat is sleeping on my chair. They do what they want, right? All right. So I'm starting with my bigger dots. And then I'm going to add smaller dots in. So I do want to switch my brush out because that's a pretty big brush for small dots. So your brush should always be whatever size works best for what you're doing. We're just going to add some dots in here. 
And you can add as many or as few of these as you'd like. They can be big, they can be little. It's your painting, you decide. Why not? See, mine aren't even perfectly round, right? Don't worry if yours aren't either. Mother Nature is pretty amazing, but she's not always perfect all of the time. So our ladybugs don't have to be perfect either. All right. <laughs> so cute. Artists, we're almost done. See, I told you we'd be done around around two. So our very final step is to going to be these antennae. Now you can do this later with a Sharpie if you want to. You might like it better that way. And they don't have to be swirly. So if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. I think I'm just going to do mine like that. You could do big swirls if you wanted to. And like I said, you can do this with a Sharpie later if you feel better about that. Now the harder that you press with your brush, the wider your bristles will spread. I think I'm going to put little balls on the end of that one. And then artists, you can add any touch-ups. So like, I need more black in here. It's a little see-through. You could also add more colors of green to your leaf. The sample I noticed, we got a little smushy in. So maybe I want to take, you know, my medium brush and add some more, oops, um, streaks in, right? I can do that. You can always paint around. Again, if you're painting over top of wet paint, you always want to have more wet paint on your brush than there is on the canvas. So whatever you do, whatever you choose to do, just make sure you're happy with it. And in the end, artists, it's all just about the process, about just simply creating and not really worrying about the end results. Whatever you create, someone somewhere will love, even if you don't. Oops. See, so this is what happens when you paint over top of wet paint and you don't have enough wet paint on your brush, is um, you actually will lift it. It's kind of annoying. So just remember you have black there, so you don't want to get too close to those. But this is your time to just add any touch-ups or any more smushes or smudges or highlights, whatever you want to do for your ladybug. Yeah, lots of wet paint down there. <laughs> All right, artists. And then when you're finished, you will probably, if you have it on an easel, you will probably want to rotate it and paint the top and the bottom. So you can paint them blue or green. You can even just paint them black, whatever you want. But if you are going to hang this, you will want to finish it. Or if you're going to give it as a gift, so you can see I'm just doing little short strokes because if I go up and down, I will probably smudge onto the front of my canvas. Oh, cute. I'm going to try something here. You don't need to do this. Ooh, what if I add some white in there? Hmm. Now I'm just getting crazy. Ooh, yeah, that was crazy. Don't do that. Yeah, not loving that so much. See, that's where you learn, right? As soon as you love your masterpiece, stop, because it will be inevitable that you do something that you do not like. But it's okay. Acrylic paint is great, because you can literally paint right over top of it. So, artists, when you are finished, 
you are going to want to wipe all the gunk out of your paintbrush. You're going to want to rinse out as much of that paint as you can. All of your extra paint is going, if you can save it, great. Otherwise, please put it in the garbage. Do not put it down your drain. Your brushes, you're going to want to wash them in warm, just warm, not hot, warm soapy water and get as much of that gunk out of your brush as possible. Then you want to reshape them and lay them flat to dry. These are your brushes. You want to keep them for a long time. That is the way to do it. So make sure that they're clean, that this paint never dries on them. Right after we're done, you're going to take your brushes. You're going to clean them, reshape them, and lay them flat to dry. Um, on that note, so don't sign off yet because I want to see all of your masterpieces, but I am going to say my goodbye and then I'm going to stop the recording and we can share. So on that note, I do want to thank you all for joining me on your Saturday afternoon to paint our lovely ladies masterpiece. Next Saturday, we are painting our bird cage. And then I actually just created a brand new masterpiece. Actually, gee, you guys, you guys will be the very first to see it. Um, so it's a, it's a flamingo. I, I think it's a flamingo. So I just did that um, this last week, finished it today. So I'm probably gonna put that one up and hopefully you can join us for that one. So thank you all so much for joining us. Have a lovely day and thank you for creating with Smudge.